You walked around and traded business cards. You have new ideas to talk with people about. <laughs> So the first talk after the break, we're now in the linking things session of the day, and I'm excited to introduce uh, John Chapman. He is a senior product manager uh, for metadata services at OCLC. Um, he's helped lead product strategy and planning of OCLC's many exciting linked data projects, among other product development. He'll be talking about person entities, lessons learned by a data provider. Hi, everyone. Um, my role at OCLC is that of, uh, uh, as was mentioned, a senior product manager in metadata services. As such, I'm responsible for our cataloging applications, but I also care about um, the data, obviously, that those cataloging applications use. Um, we saw an opportunity uh, to learn, try to learn more about the entities that we'd created in-house and see how we might be able to provide better access to those entities to leverage those within cataloging workflows. Over the past several years, we've released WorldCat Works and WorldCat Persons, which between them uh, total more than 300 million uh, separate entities. Um, what we found, though, um, you know, we sort of had this moment about we've created all these entities, but people aren't really using them um, as much as we would like. So um, we asked the question about, you know, how could we make it easier for people to use them um, instead of just having to find them through following links. So how could we index them? How could we provide services around them uh, to improve that, uh, improve that situation? So today I'll just be talking about, um, you know, essentially how we enhanced, provided the data, um, some of the lessons that we learned around that, and then how we see the discussion uh, moving forward. So as I mentioned, the primary goal was to improve access to our entities via an API first type model. Um, what I mean by that is just that we didn't stress at the beginning providing any sort of UI for this. Um, especially uh, as we started developing the strategy, we decided that most of the institutions that would be using it uh, would be wanting to write their own tools, uh, perhaps write their own UIs uh, to consume that. So we didn't. Um, prioritize the creation of a UI. Um, the two major workflow considerations that we wanted to work in, treat as use cases, were when you're creating metadata, um, how could you most easily find and refer to uh, WorldCat person entities? Um, and then we also wanted to, to um, work around some use cases about improving navigation uh, affordances in terms of possibly um, knowledge cards, um, provide tools of that sort so that people could put those into a UI. Um, we had uh, a small group. Uh, the group um, included uh, members of some institutions here in the audience. Uh, we had um, National Library of Poland, uh, National Library of Germany, uh, Cornell, um, Harvard, Library of Congress, National Library of Medicine in the US, Stanford, UC Davis, Pepperdine, and Drexel as well as the Swiss Bib organization that we heard from earlier today. The pilot um, that we ran against these um, person entities had a very short time frame. We did it um, basically in uh, October to February, and then we had a, a sharp cutoff. We actually shut the service down after that, um, after that time frame. Uh, it had two phases, the first one being sort of just the same as uh, identifier lookup, very simple. A second phase um, was much, much more involved and involved string matching for person names. Um, we realized going into phase one that everybody really, really wanted the stuff in phase two, but we had to, um, you know, we had to work towards that. We couldn't offer it all immediately. So as I mentioned, phase one being a same as service. Um, what we did here was we started with VF and what VF does with matching between uh, the different authority files. We didn't, we didn't take VF data, we, but we used the same algorithms and rebuilt it. Uh, we provided um, 
additional links based on anything we could find through analyzing, as I said, not only the VF corpus, but WorldCat, um, some of the projects that uh, some people might be familiar with, the WorldCat entities, uh, using some of the strategies that we learned there. Um, so this is basically an ID to ID matching. Um, the request that went into the service would have to include a known identifier, and then for match back, you would get our person entity URI, which you can find down here in the list somewhere, um, as well as all the other matching, um, matching URIs. So something to note here, um, you know, in the pilot, we had a lot of discussion about the difference between authority data and person data, the difference between modeling uh, collection of names versus modeling information about a person. Note here in the list that we have several examples of URIs that refer to this person as a topic, so not just a name, a name reference. Um, so phase two, as I mentioned, much more involved. Um, this, in, this included a text-based search. And um, the data stored in the entity included um, a lot more. So we started storing a preferred name or preferred names um, in a bunch of different name forms, including language tags. Um, so also important here to note is that we provided um, things that we called roles, topics, and also provided a score. So roles and topics were determined um, going against bibliographic data. So essentially the most prevalent uh, subject headings um, among the bibliographic entities that the name was, or the person was associated with, um, that became the topic. Um, and then the most prevalent role that that person has been assigned in terms of those same resources in WorldCat became the role. Um, during the pilot, we learned that in some cases more was better because the top topic might not make a lot of sense or the top role might not make a lot of sense just on a purely statistical basis. This is especially a problem with some, some folks who aren't traditional authors of works. Um, the score then is more complicated. This was provided in the response um, to a search. So if you got a result list back um, you know, entered a name into the service, got 10 results back. Uh, one option was to rank those by a score, and I'll show an example of that in a minute. Um, but what that is is basically, imagine sort of a page rank type of, type of thing. So how interconnected is that person within WorldCat? Um, so we found that to be especially useful for the, um, some of the partial matches, um, that we offered via the service, some of the fuzzy matching. So I was told that people wouldn't mind if I put up some JSON, so I'm gonna do that. So um, this is a, a single result from a search. So this search um, is simplified, but I could add parameters in terms of a result set of one, 10. Um, so one of the results here, we get the entity ID, we get a default label, birth date, role, topic, the score, as I mentioned. Uh, scores, I saw scores from something like 40,000 down to two, so there's a fairly wide range. Um, of particular note here are all the language labels that we have. Um, this was very intense uh, processing to do this, so, um, and it wasn't very, um, it wasn't very neat. Um, if I can explain that for, for just a minute. So essentially what we wanted to do was allow for searches to be focused towards a specific language. Um, unfortunately, the connection between specific authority files and specific languages isn't always neat. Um, so we had to make some educated guesses uh, in some cases to distinguish between uh, say British English and American English um, some authority files aren't dedicated to a specific language and that makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, but you can see here, I actually snipped the number of language labels here in brackets there, got a little, a little, a little long, but um, those would be things that you could search against. Um, also during the, um, during the pilot, we 
heard some requests for improving searching against some of these different uh, different parameters. So could I combine a name search with a language or something like that? We didn't get there um, in our short in our short time frame. We also had some interesting discussions around whether that would require re-indexing and creating new indexes or whether we wanted to do that through more of a, a bundle of terms type model. Um, although I, 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 although we tried to make it a UI, uh, sorry, an API first model, uh, we did also provide um, some demo web apps. So the first um, type of demo web app we did basically um, use this type of response form to build sort of a bento box type display um, of ranked results, uh, prettifying and formatting some of the information that you see here on the screen, um, and then obviously ranking those by the score. And then upon clicking on one of those, you would get a nice display um, of that entity. Uh, so just a really uh, a mock-up here. Um, well, not a mock-up, but this is a prototype that we developed and delivered during the, uh, during the pilot. What's interesting here is that you can see some of the information, the picture, uh, the little tagline, Spanish painter and printmaker, and that extensive uh, description are actually not stored in the person entity. They're just stored as links, and then at, at, at render time, we're going out and grabbing that and then displaying it. Um, but you can see the alternate names are listed same as relationships are listed. And then something fun that we experimented with was um, grabbing the family relationships out of uh, Wikidata. I don't have a good example, but for some of those, we could actually link back to other person entities. So some lessons learned. Um, I have lessons learned sort of from the data aggregator view, from the service provider view, and then from a uh, from pilot activity participants uh, type of view. So the first just being that uh, many sources are available. Uh, no single source is good at everything. Um, you know, not naming names, but we found that, you know, some files would be really good at dates, and so we trusted those. Um, but that, that file might be excellent at a specific language format, so we would um, trust that one a little bit more. Um, so the quality does vary widely by element type. So when we're talking about weighting, we're talking about preferring, we're talking about adjusting, that's not at the source level, that's at that field per source level. Um, we also feel that um, data aggregation is, is crucial. So a lot of the crunching that we did to try to improve search results really benefited from the fact that we had all of this data in-house. Um, we, we talked about is providing context at scale. So you can bring a lot of things to bear in terms of how important a person is within the corpus and then all the different ways that information about that person can be provided. And weighting and scoring are absolutely crucial. Goes along with that scale. So from the service consumer's view, um, the first thing I wanted to mention was just that, you know, remembering our workflows, remembering, um, you know, if I'm trying to enter information, a link uh, for, a, for a person entity, I need to have that context. I need to have, um, you know, if I'm searching for a John Smith, I got to find that, that right John Smith. So having those roles, having those topics, having the dates available right there in that first search result response is, is, is critical and, and useful. Um, obviously, context being key to names. Um, as the victim of kind of a common name myself, um, I feel this one deeply. So there's a lot of John Chapmans in the database. Um, and then I mentioned a little bit earlier about the difference between possibly indexing more terms versus having more terms piled in and available for search. Um, indexing is expensive, um, and so that's something that we uh, talked about a lot. The language support, very important, but it is inexact. So we saw, saw some edge cases that maybe were not edge casey enough popping up. Um, the nice thing about um, language tagging would be things like, for example, if you, if you know a name is Chinese, you can go ahead and treat the honorifics in a specific way that you need to do differently than if it's an English name. So 
getting that right is great. It's difficult to get that right in an automated fashion 100% of the time. We also had an unsolved problem around sparse clusters. So the person entity data follows a, follows a classic long tail model. So we created something like 120 million person entities. There's roughly 17 million of those that are really highly cross-linked that we can bring a lot of this uh, processing to bear. Um, a lot of the other stuff is, you know, one OCLC number, one name, we don't know a lot else. So something that people asked about during the pilot, and we, again, we didn't have time to explore it more fully, but, you know, we can think of a lot of good ways to get there would be um, how to get those clusters better integrated within um, the whole network. The combined view then, if you can't find that entity, how can you create a new ID and how will that work into an effective workflow? So when you're minting IDs, um, any little bit of friction means that you slow that workflow down very quickly. We heard requests about, you know, can we enhance the service to uh, create a new person entity? So um, where do we go from here? From an OCLC point of view, uh, we want to con continue starting and then ending these pilots and experiments, so have process them quickly. Uh, we want to move more from projects to production. Um, we relied heavily on VF, on ISNI, on WorldCat Identities. We're very interested in uh, continuing to move those to some more sustainable and persistent uh, systems at an operational level. Um, we want to consider positive and negative incentives. So uh, what are the incentives to use particular identifiers and to participate in their enhancement, especially in an environment where things are being clustered and matched? Where's the biggest bang for the buck? Where's the biggest return on investment in terms of correcting and enhancing metadata within a vastly networked graph? And then also, uh, we, we need to surface that local expertise to build context. So, um, there are many pockets of specialized knowledge around the world. Bringing those in brings yet another perspective, yet another angle, angle to view things on. Um, so then, in, the, in that bigger point of view, uh, single aggregation is never going to be complete and comprehensive. Uh, we want to encourage some more focused experimentation this way. We're really happy with how we were able to iterate and improve the services that we provided. And um, we'd like to continue to work together, whether it's VF, ISNI, or WorldCat, to better represent these connections between bibliographic data and traditional authority data. Lastly, I can take questions. I also wanted to thank my colleagues who worked with me and helped out um, with the service, provided the technical backbone, so Jeff Mixter, Stephen Shindahedi, and Bruce Washburn. Thank you. Thank you, John. That was excellent. So do we have questions for the speaker? Yes. Thank you very much for this talk, John. Uh, to catch up your last sentence, uh, let's continue to work together. <laughs> because SysBib was, as you, as you mentioned, SysBib was part of the second phase of this, uh, of this project, and I gave you some feedback. And uh, I think it was quite positive feedback, because, um, yes, uh, I, I made some tests, and it, and it would be very helpful for us uh, to link our person entities against other repositories, but I haven't heard an, anything since last, uh, since last February what's, what's going on and how we could use your person entity API. So um, to be clear, we have a couple different versions, unfortunately, of person data. So as I mentioned, for the past uh, two and a half, three years, we've been publishing WorldCat entities. Um, for this pilot, what we did was essentially create a, a, an enhanced version of these person entities um, and then provide access to them via the service. Um, in terms of moving the service into production along the way, um, we realized that many of the systems that we rely on uh, needed to be brought to a better production environment. Um, a lot of what I described is manual effort, um, semi-automated, 
and wasn't part of our main production workflow. So um, we are waiting to announce availability until we have this better supported and can commit to it as a sustainable project. Um, we know in the past OCLC has had services that have sort of an unclear status in terms of whether they're experimental or production. We don't want to do that again. And that's one of the reasons why we had that firm stop date. So. Are there other questions? Thank you. On the user interface, I see the uh, family relationship uh, uh, box. And uh, how do you build this, uh, this box? Uh, are uh, textual information or relations? Real relation. I'm afraid I don't understand the question. <laughs> uh, in, on, the, on your slide, I see the a box uh, with your uh, family relation. Oh, yes. Okay, okay on the right side. And uh, I, uh, I would like to know if uh, you, uh, you create uh, object properties with real relation between uh, persons or are only textual information for this, uh, to create this, uh, this network. So, um, for that feature, what we were able to do is pull in data from, from Wikidata um, for the display here. Um, what, we, what we were also able to do as an experiment, but not sort of fully within the database, is if these names that were referred to, for example, if his father was, a, was represented by a person entity, then we could also link, provide that as a link instead of just text. Um, the, that was a messy and not very successful experiment, so we didn't really roll that out. Yeah. Other questions? Oh. Hi, John. Um, one of the things I've been interested in with things like VF, and I think it applies to these computed personal identities as well, is how does one think about persistence in this space? So I can imagine seeing them as a, you know, a lookup and then you find some other more managed identifier like the ISNI which you record, but if there's a potential for the VF or the person entity to, to change on a recomputation, how do you think about managing that in a persistent sense? Right, so we know that the, um, the, the drift in VF identifiers is a huge problem. Uh, we wrestled with that um, in the project. Um, our goal would be to provide person entity IDs that were persistent and sustainable and linked to whatever, whatever they could uh, when, when you resolve them. Um, as I mentioned, we don't want to roll something out that we're not fully behind in terms of the IDs being persistent. So much of the work you've seen here is not production ready yet. Um, so. I think that in order for the, um, I think this use case where, where at, the, at the ID level when you resolve that ID, you get not just links but context is very powerful. Um, and so we want to do it right and roll that out when it's ready. Um. This is a difficult question having to do with the read-write web and closing the loop of data. Where do we report problems and do you have a sort of workflow for handling problems? I'm right now looking at the page for Stephen Hawking and when it says his name is also Jane Hawking, scientist, I mean the primary name uh, and a few other names that are maybe his relatives but obviously not his own. So is there some sort of a workflow of reporting these errors back to the providers somehow. Right, so the errors that you mentioned, if I understand them, um, may be in the data providers or it may be in our computation. Um, and so in terms of reporting errors, um, this is but primarily, you know, we have email addresses that, you know, support requests or uh, record corrections can go to. Um, as a semi-production service, we would just route those to the right person. Any other questions? Oh. 
this may be something you can't really talk about in detail, but given that you have really large numbers of data sets to crunch, could you hint at the infrastructure you're using for that? Sure. So the, um, again, I'm a product guy. Um, so at the database level, we, we're using Hadoop and HBase uh, to build the entities. And then um, in terms of the, the pilot and how the search was done against those entities, that's an elastic search implementation. And then our, our UI stack is Node.js and some AngularJS for some particular implementations. Um, in terms of the data processing, though, it's multiple iterations through uh, first the authority files and then through the bibliographic data, uh, gathering IDs, and then further steps of mapping those, building interlinks between them, again, possibly at the wrong conference because I can't explain it in more detail, but. All right, thank you very much for that. Yay, yeah, we can clap again. <laughs>